finally replied, I think it looks like, um, to kind of clear the, the issue up a little bit, right? Um, so he said the following. Let me see if yeah, his actual Instagram account because he said he did the Instagram live, right? Let's see what he did there. But it's just interesting to see this stuff in it because it's like Gordo by name, Gordo by fucking nature. Greedy, 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 greedy guy. Um, let's see. So Gordo DJ um, Instagram. Let's see if he's posted anything because he said he was on a live. So I'm doing this live actually and to see what this guy said before we actually read his statement on Twitter. Let's quickly go. He said, what really happened in London on Sunday morning? Ministry of Sound. Hilarious, dude. Let's see if we can see this. There's no posts on here from the video we don't see. <laughs> uh, no wonder they hate him on Techno Twitter, man. He's everything they hate. Just looking at those pictures. What they, he said he's going... Okay, he didn't go live. Okay, he didn't go live, okay? So he didn't go live at all. So I don't see the live posts on there. Um, if anybody else has got it, then please pass it along. But just scanning his Instagram, I could definitely see why Techno Twitter would not be a fan of him, innit? He's got loads of dudes up on the stage behind him. He's standing on top of the decks. He's got his sunglasses on, Cuban links. He's got T-shirts with his own name on it. Um, loads of loads of uh, white ladies and bare buttocks are out as well. You know, designer sunglasses, pictures with him and Drake back in the day. Um, you know, just stuff that people wouldn't like. Shopping, I think there's a shopping picture I saw here. Yeah. Suffrages with a bag crossing the street. Loads of funny shit on there. So clear why techno, techno Twitter for the most part wouldn't be a fan of the good dude. So let's see what he said anyway. His explanation is as follows. Godo versus via, via Twitter. He said, I've been ex I've been doing extended Godo sets ranging from three hours to ten hours to give my fans... <laughs> You already started off with some fucking arrogance. Look at this guy, man. I am the Don. I play for more than two hours. If you, I mean, if you're playing after me, just be aware. I am going to big time you. <laughs> anyway, um, I've been doing sets for three hours to 10 hours to give my fans the best experience possible. And I was incredibly excited about my headlining Ministry of Sound UK debut. Okay, but it's a headlining set. It doesn't mean you. It, it's not. You're not playing all night, mate. So you still have to give other people a ch chance to play. If you want to play all night, promote an all night set. Don't promote a headlining set. Because if he was that big of a deal, he would just play it by himself and be prepared to sell as many tickets as possible. But clearly, you know, Mitchell sounds a fucking big venue. You know, it's it's unlikely. You know, somebody like Gordo will be able to sell it out. Not not like it's not. You know, it, it can happen, but it's unlikely. So that's why you fill it out with other people. So him saying that is fucking wild. Anyway, it continues. We've been working on this show for months. My agent that flew from Germany, ooh, big agent from Germany, um, who was there, one of my main promoters and management prior and during the show told me that my time slot was flexible. <laughs> this guy's a cunt. This guy's a proper cunt. See what I mean? It doesn't, it, it, do not attribute to racism what can be attributed to cuntinism. Honestly, this is pure cuntinism. What an absolute piece of shit. <laughs> this is just a situation where you can just say hey i fucked up sorry i was feeling a vibe i extend my apologies to ways and easel um i've extended an invite for them to come and see me play or to come out and play with not come and see play to come out and play with me at my next festival at this i've you know covered the flights and accommodation as a you know as an apology for the last event hopefully we can make up and you know it's all one love or whatever you know what i mean that's what you should do extend an olive branch this guy's just explaining why he was a cunt and explaining why he wasn't wrong <laughs> <laughs> okay continue let's just continue because i keep stuff in here he says yeah um let's continue again my management that flew in from germany ooh, who was there one of the main promoters and the management prior and during the show told me that my time slot was flexible seeing the seeing as the club stayed open until 6 a.m and that there would be a closer on standby if i wanted to end early <laughs> what a prick i was not informed that this meant ways or easel wouldn't be able to get a proper opportunity but if you saw them in the booth why wouldn't you just assume that they were the other djs that wanted to play and why wouldn't you just say you know what i've had my fun you guys jump on do a little back-to-back -back, or you can play whatever like why would you just like <laughs> this guy? anyway continues i've been djing for see they've both did that though innit? it um you know, Easel did the same thing, right? Always did the same thing. I've been playing for more than 10 years. This is unacceptable. Him as well. I've been playing for many years. I can be a prick. <laughs> he continues. Um, I have never had this issue ever with another act. 
<laughs> because they're too scared, mate. You're fucking massive. You just done a fucking collab album with Drake. You know what I mean? You're probably signed to WME or something or CAA or something. You've probably got great representation. You know what I mean? It's clear why they don't say your name. Come on. Or they don't even mention it because they don't want to be blackboard. That's pretty obvious. Um, or maybe your security guys probably don't even let them get next to the booth. <laughs> Imagine that. You go to play a closing set and you're finishing a night where Gordo played that and you can't even get into the booth and you're playing. The, the, the security guards will leave. <laughs> it's kind of comforting this sort of stuff because it's good to know that shitty situations happen to every DJ regardless of where along the journey you are. Because I know I've had situations where I felt like complete shit and questioned why I'm doing it, you know, where you've kind of gone to play somewhere and the promoter runs away, you can't find him the whole night and you basically leave and he doesn't ever pay you. Those kind of things <laughs> happen, right? Or you, you get booked for a gig, it confirms and then they don't conf they don't really confirm anything. It doesn't happen. Like, loads of shitty things happen. And you feel like, oh, it's just because you're at like a lowly level, but it seems like different sort of like county situations or hurdles kind of come your way along the way, regardless of how big you are. And you just have to kind of figure out how to sort of manage them. But anyway, continue. So let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> I've never had this issue with ever with another act. It was obvious miscommunication. No, it wasn't. And I'm so sorry that it happened to them. Okay, he finally said sorry after all those lines of text. Good to see. You. I've been ways and ease of shoes before though and understand <laughs> <laughs> so he's basically saying i've been there bruv just suck it up it is what it is i'm the bigger guy you know what i mean like i've got the bigger profile you're playing at my show that's what basically he's saying um just grin and bear it and you can maybe you know what happens with this sort of stuff actually this is what breeds a bad environment and culture overall what happens is that you get treated like shit by somebody and more often than not because everybody around them is a piece of shit and this industry overall is just not giving you good vibes you end up then reciprocating that shitty stuff to other people coming up too instead of correcting that kind of attitude that's the issue at hand i think for the most part um and that's where kind of it kind of breathes for a minute it continues um i've been with, i've been in ways and easels um shoes before though and understand what shitty spot they were put in so let me make it up to you both let's get you added to some of my future shows as a make good oh okay did do that. okay let's make let's make it to my future shows as a make good that's nice so he did actually make it good by offering them an opportunity to play at one of his <laughs> next shows. <laughs> Hopefully they're not opening like from like, I don't know, 6 p.m. till 9 <laughs> you know I mean? or something. But that's quite nice that he did that at the end. But still, the the, the ego and the kind of uh, hubris from this guy is out of, off the chain, isn't it? He spent so much time justifying his cuntiness only to apologize and, and offer a solution. But still, a lot of texts there basically illustrating why people had a kind of bad vibe from the whole situation and kind of were really, really pissed off in general. Um, let me actually see. I think the easel guy made a post too. What did he say about the whole thing? Did he speak about it too? I think he did, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go. I think it might be a business test note thing. I think he spoke about it too. Was he on there? I can't see him on there. Maybe it's on this one. Uh, look at this troll. He, he announced he was quitting music and then I think he changed his name to fucking whatever he changed it to, right? But this is Ezel. Ezel said the same. Let's see what Ezel said. Ezel at the time said, um, first of all, I'd like to apologize to people that came all the way to Ministry of Sound to support me last night. <laughs> Yesterday, I drove 10 hours to do that. <laughs> Honestly, it's fucking brutal, this industry. Honestly, it's f DJing is one of the most thankless tasks ever, mate. Like, I've played in fucking pub breweries before, DJing in a little laptop with a MIDI controller. I've played at weddings that no one turned up to. <laughs> I played at flipping student lobbies, right? <laughs> where where I was told, hey, we want house music. I got there and brought all my house music, like Omar S and that type of stuff. And those guys wanted, like, I don't know, um, what's his name? They wanted disclosure type house and I had none of it. I had like proper house music and they wanted like top 50 house music. So I, I had to play four hours of stuff that they didn't like and they, and they, they um, vociferously let me know that they didn't like what I played. <laughs> and the promoter was so angry to have me the money at the end of the night I felt like it was daylight robbery I've done all that stuff I've played out outdoors in gardens like horrible things right with one speaker like terrible terrible parties so it's just honestly weirdly comforting to know that a verified blue tick artist and DJ from Instagram is having the same sort of 
you know, obviously on a different scale, but also having fucking excruciatingly painful and hurtful sort of <laughs> experiences, just trying to pursue their dreams, put some food on the table, you know, provide a good time for the pun. It's quite comforting. I'm not going to lie. It, it, maybe is there's something comforting and, you know, shared misery and pain, but I'm not laughing at the guy's just situation in general. It's just absolutely horrible, man. <laughs> just I drove 10 hours in my first set at the main room of Ministry Sound. I spent six hours curating playlists and was a massive deal for me my set time was between 5 6 5 a.m to 6 a.m in the box and i had friends there and people who would come down just to support i got to come at 4 a.m which is well before his time this means this guy's prompt and professional about what he does got one hour ahead of time i usually arrive at 30 minutes sometimes 10 minutes before my set the first guy came an hour before and he's a fucking legit artist there's a lot about him um so props I got to the club at 4 a.m. and was told that Gordo slash Carnage <laughs> slash Prick <laughs> had refused to come off the set, um, leaving the artist before me waiting around. As time passed on, it was clear Gordo wasn't coming off the stage <laughs> for the rest of the artist. So um, not only for this, but then he refused to come off of my slot playing a total of three and a half hours. You imagine telling somebody with autism that the plan had changed. In that moment, I was so overwhelmed. <laughs> really, Easel? All right, anyway, I was overwhelmed and the artist that was in the same position was so chill with me that I ended up feeling chill after talking to him. I'm extremely disappointed that I did not get the opportunity to play in the box room at Ministry of Sound and hope that one day I'll get the opportunity to do so again. Hopefully Ministry of Sound put them on again and just let them play back to back the whole night. That would be nice. Thank you, Ministry of Sound, for staying professional and thankful for ways for being so lovely. You made my night worth it. It's also funny as well, like in this scene of Tech House stuff, like three and a half hours is deemed to be a long set. That's to be to be like, whoa, this guy played forever, man. He was on for ages. When really, like in techno scene or house scene, especially outside of this sort of commercial bubble, four hours is like the minimum to kind of really get your feet under the table to really provide a vibe. Do you know what I mean? That's the that's the minimum. Um, but so to people to get really irate that you're playing for three hours says a lot. It basically says that all the top guys and gals are being flown around the world, private jets and stuff, buying Balenciaga to play one and a half hours and getting paid bucket loads of cash. So maybe that's why the venues don't really bother because if you're going to pay this dude, let's say 20 grand to play somewhere and he wants to go over time and he still is happy with the 20 grand, you're going to be happy with it. You're like, Fuck, whatever, innit? Because the more people that are around in the club, they're going to be like, oh, wow, he's going over the time. They're going to keep buying drinks. They're going to keep doing their drugs and dancing and shit. So it works out pretty well for the venue. This is probably why they don't get involved. So you're as a DJ, you're literally on your own. You have to kind of scrap. You have to kind of get in there and, you know, and start throwing some blows. You know what I mean? Elbows and whatnot. And so, hey, come here, come here. Get off the stage. Get off the stage. But clearly that didn't work. Clearly that didn't happen. God, I won in the end. But he still offered them a little, you know, a little olive a little olive branch by saying hey come and play at my next show <laughs> play the opening set and i'll play the rest of, i'll play the good hours you play the shit hours. no i don't think you said that but let's see how that transpires in general but again that kind of proves my point that in general you know don't attribute to racism what can attribute to cuntism because in general in this scene especially there are a lot of cunts at every level you just have to kind of find out a way to navigate around them but you're going to come across them one way or the other sooner or later <laughs> 